football. As everyone expected in the NFC Central, it has come down to the final two weeks of the season. The Detroit Lions atop the division, Green Bay and Minnesota still alive at 7-7, seven and, seven, and the Chicago Bears still actually with a hope for a playoff spot at 6-8. and eight. And all of these teams have similar hopes, either for a division title or a wild card. They're all still alive in the NFC with Detroit and San Francisco with the Rams on top. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here at the Metrodome. And Johnny, even though Bud Grant and Mike Ditka are not talking at all about being in the playoffs, they both indicate they've got strong motivations to win today. Uh, yes, they do, Tim, when you talk about Mike Ditka. He says, and it's true, the Bears have not won up here in Minnesota since 1971. No player on the current roster has ever tasted victory up in Minnesota, so that ought to be some kind of incentive there. As for Bud Grant, he's not talking playoffs, as you said. He just says he wants his team to win the last two games, end up the season at 9-7. and seven. He had such high hopes at the beginning of the season that they could go all the way, but they had been decimated by injuries. And he says, let's just end up 9-7, and seven, let the cards fall where they may. So it's about time for kickoff. Okay, the Vikings will receive the football, defending to our right, Bob Thomas, as the Bears are in their traveling white today, will be the kicker from the 35-yard line. Darren Nelson goes back with Jarvis Redwine, two dangerous kickoff returners as we are about to get underway at the Metrodome. And, of course, the fans here uh, not prepared to give up hope for the uh, Vikings. Their situation is that they can still win this division. They must win their last two games, of course, while Detroit loses two. And... The Green Bay Packers split, so that's uh, kind of a tall order, but anything is possible. And the Vikings can make a wild card with uh, the combination of winning both their games while the Rams or 49ers lose two and the Saints and the Packers split their remaining two games. So as usual, it's that very complex situation. The bottom line is that both these teams, if they have any chance at all, must win their two remaining games. And the kickoff by Thomas will be taken by Nelson at the nine. Straight ahead for Darren Nelson to the 26-yard line where Dan Raines, reserve linebacker number 53, makes the stop. The Vikings offensively have Steve Dills at quarterback for the injured Tommy Kramer. Galbraith, Nelson, Terry LeCount, Leo Lewis will be the wide receivers. And uh, they have injuries there to White and McCollum. Along the line, Riley Huff, Swilly, Hamilton, Irwin, and Dave Casper were scheduled to be the starter as we have a penalty on the kickoff play. Uh, Casper with a hamstring was back in action last week uh, was scheduled to be back in action last week and couldn't go in the Monday night game and he is still somewhat questionable today holding 82 receiving team first down Bob Brewer was the man penalized for holding and Bob Brewer will make the start at the tight end as it develops number 82 five-year man from nearby Mankato State so it's first down from the 15 for the Vikings. Dill's going deep. He's got a man open. Leo Lewis oh. making the count, and he is hauled down by Leslie Frazier at the Bears' 42-yard line. An interference penalty will give the Vikings a first down in Bears territory. Oh. Well, he went for it all, Johnny, and LeCount had Frazier beaten. First play of the football game, and I think it was a good call because there's no question that Frazier was beaten. And he uh, tried to uh, drag LeCount at the second, makes contact there before the ball comes down. And the Vikings have a first down in Bear territory. And that's a booming way to start out. Pull that ball all the way down the field. Number 21 defense, first down. Les Frazier hasn't been beaten too much. He has six interceptions, tied for third in the uh, NFC. So he's been doing very well. But he got beat that time. I, I think, think they got the Bears by a little bit by surprise, yeah, I'm don't not you? I'm sure that's the case, especially because LeCount is still playing with an ankle injury and is not running at full speed. So apparently he just caught Frazier napping on the opening play. First down, swing pass, a lot of blockers in front of Nelson. Nelson picks up about nine. The ball comes loose, but after the whistle has blown, Otis Wilson made the tackle. And defensively for the Bears in their 4-3, Mike Hartenstein, Jim Osborne back starting at left tackle, Steve McMichael, and Richard Dent for Dan Hampton. Hampton re-injured the knee that has kept him out of several games. He will not play today. Wilson Singletary, Al Harris is in Gary Campbell's spot at right linebacker, and Gary Fenchick makes his return after missing most of the season with that severe groin pull. He is back in at the safety spot. Second and two for the Vikings. One setback, and it is 
Galbraith, number 20, uh, 32, Tony Galbraith, who was trying for the first down and appears to have gained it. So the Vikings will be in scoring position now if they have been given that first down at the 32-yard line. It is a first down. Galbraith with 365 yards rushing coming into today's game. And Ted Brown is back from his one-game suspension. He missed a couple of games with a shoulder injury and then missed the rehabilitation process and some practices and team meetings. He was suspended by Bud Grant, the Vikings coach, but he is back in the lineup today after being out the one game with the suspension. Nelson off the right tackle side, picks up about five, and Jim Osborne makes the tackle. Good blocking out that side as there was on the swing pass, John. Well, they're moving right down the field, and I don't think we have to list all those uh, injuries, but there's no question that the Vikings uh, have really been decimated by those injuries to keep people all season. Bud Grant told us yesterday he actually thought he could go all the way to the Super Bowl at the beginning of the season because the team was looking so good. And then, of course, Kramer went down, and uh, then a whole bunch of injuries after that. There's the Minnesota offense in 83. Look at that. Three wide receivers, Lewis, Jones, and LeCount. They give it oh. to Galbraith. Big hole up the middle. Another first down, and he's into the 18-yard line of Chicago. Gary Fenton made the tackle. He's first in some time, having been out of action with the groin injury. You take a look at this, you can just see him slip right through. There's Jim Huff, Wes Hamilton, everybody blocking well, just created the crease, and uh, Galbraith saw it, and Gary Fenty called upon to make his first tackle in a long time, number 45, as the Vikings. This is a beautiful drive. Tony Galbraith, the eight-year man from Missouri. And Mike Ditka watching calmly from the sidelines as the Vikings march the opening possession down into scoring Terry deep now in the Chicago zone. And they may have run out of time on the clock getting that first down playoff. That is the signal delay of game against the Vikings. So uh, they hurt themselves here with that. Steve Dill's looking over now to uh, pick up the signals for the next play. Vikings will sometimes deliver in the play to Dills and sometimes signal it in. Delay of game, offense, first down. Whatever they did that time uh, took too long. You know, we were talking about the injuries. I think that has a bearing on Steve Dill's performance, wouldn't you say, when you're going with a lacking a lot of the power power that you have, uh, especially at the attack positions? Oh, yeah, certainly. Uh, Sammy White, for instance, is a passing target, one of the best in the league. That is Galbraith again, trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Got about four. Otis Wilson pulled him down. It'll be second down, and, well, they only gave him a two-yard gain. It'll be second and 13 at the... 23-yard line of the Chicago Bears. Opening series, no score. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris at the Metrodome. The Bears rush in Terry Schmidt and Dave Dewerson here at the last second. Osborne and Harris going out defensively. So they have three defensive linemen. Otis Wilson, 55, is right up on the line also. Galbraith goes in motion. Everybody's out of there, and Dills under pressure, rolling right. Got it off complete. That is Leo Lewis. And it looks like he has a first down at the eight-yard line. What a fine effort by Dills, pressured out of the pocket. And little Leo Lewis, five foot eight out of Missouri, in his third year, made a good catch. Good play by Dills. He made the play. As the Bears did blitz, you'll see 55, Otis Wilson, come right up the middle. But he's jammed up. And uh, Richard Dent gets in there also. But Dills gets out of the pocket, throws on the run, double coverage there. But the pass was perfect as the Vikings keep this drive alive down to the eight-yard line. Leo Lewis, a free agent, picked up out of the Canadian Football League in 1981. His father played in that same Canadian league, was a distinguished star on Bud Grant teams in Winnipeg. Darren Nelson, nowhere to go. And a good tackle deep in the backfield by Todd Bell, number 25, will drop the Vikings back outside the 15 to the 17-yard line. Well, that was a kind of a little delay draw back against the grain, and this is what happens when you get a quick little back who tries to uh, ad-lib this time. They end up with a big loss, and uh, as Otis Wilson kind of jammed up the play, and Nelson tries to get away, and there's Todd Bell, number 25. So that's a big loss. Nine yards, huh? Almost 10 yards. Now, again, Buddy Ryan sending in his two pass defenders at the last possible instant. And 
It is second down and goal for the Vikings. Up the middle and almost a one-handed grab by Galbraith, but not quite hold on. It'll be third down. Vikings, of course, failed to score against Detroit. Their two points coming on a, an intentional safety given up by the Lions late in the game. You know, you mentioned a key point about Buddy Ryan, the defensive coordinator. He feels that he can win games if he can substitute with the teams and make the last second substitution so that he gets good matchups. As you recall, last year the Vikings really pounded on the Bears, getting some mismatches on coverage uh, and scored at will against Chicago last year up here. Third and goal from the 17, a slot formation right with Terry LeCount wide to the right. The motion along the line, a flag is down, the pass intended up the middle there for Mike Jones, the rookie wide receiver number 89. It was off the mark, but the infraction may well be against Chicago. It looked like Richard Dent may have uh, jumped offside a little bit before the snap. Offside is the preliminary signal from our referee today, Tom Billy. Mike Jones from Tennessee State, the fourth pick, would not figure to be getting much receiving time with the Vikings. Bud Grant does not use rookies very often, but to, with the injuries to Sammy White, and Sam McCullum, all of a sudden, Mike Jones finds himself in the action. Sides, defense, third down. Well, they didn't uh, single out any primary suspect there. Could have been Otis Wilson. I think it was Dent. It might have been Dent. So it is third and goal, and the Vikings pick up an easy five on the penalty. In motion comes Jones back to the slot. Bill's getting time, flares it out. It is incomplete. Galbraith. Tried to reach out for the ball as though he wanted to cut back in inside Mike Singletary, who was covering him, and he really needed to take one more step to get to the ball. That's exactly right. Singletary was on the coverage man for man, number 50, and uh, he knew he was there, and he was trying to make that move back to the inside. Didn't go far enough as Benny Ricardo will come in to uh, attempt an apparent field goal, and he was hot at the beginning of the year. He's kind of cooled off a little bit. Yes, he's 23 of 30 now. That's not too bad. That's not shabby. No, but that was uh, due to the good start <laughs> that he uh, he made. This will be from the 20-yard line, a 30-yard attempt for Ricardo. And it is good. So the Vikings roll 72 yards with their opening series and pick up the first three points of the game. And we have 10 minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter in this all-important game for the Vikings and the Bears. Minnesota on top. So the Vikings went 72 yards and nine plays, and then Benny Ricardo connected on the 30-yard field goal on the 10th play, and so they used up 4:49 on the clock, which is also something the Vikings would like to be able to do today. And uh, they are off to a three-nothing lead. Ricardo will kick it off deep for the Chicago Bears. Willie Galt, number 83, with Anthony Hutchison, 32, and Brian Bashnagel, number 84. Benny Ricardo, of course, he got the opportunity here in Minnesota because of yet another injury that occurred early in the year to Rick Danmeyer. Short kickoff. Golf from the 14. Good coverage by the Vikings. No opportunity for him to get to the sideline. Tom Hanna, number 45, making the tackle at the 27-yard line of the Bears. Jim McMahon will bring out the Bears with Suey and Peyton at the running back positions. Dennis McKinnon getting the start with Willie Galt, wide receiver. Across the front, Covert, Jackson, Hilgenberg, Becker, Andy Frederick continues ahead of Keith Van Horn at right tackle and Emery Moorhead the tight end. First down, Chicago. First time they've had the football here with 10.04 remaining in the opening period. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris live from the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Peyton in motion. Matt Suey trying the middle. And Charlie Johnson, number 65, was waiting for him. So Suey squeezed over to the left, picked up about three before he was stopped by Fred McNeil. Defensively, the Vikings have been a pretty solid football team all season long, with a couple of exceptions. Doug Martin on the left side, Charlie Johnson on the nose, Neil Elshire with the injury to Mullaney getting a chance to start there. Blair, Studwell, Johnson, and McNeil, outstanding veteran linebackers. And the secondary has a rookie on it today, Carl Lee on the left corner with Willie Teal on the right side. Hannon and Turner are the safety. Second down and seven for the Bears. They come out of the I formation slot left. Pitch to Payton. They 
they shut him down right at the line of scrimmage. Matt Blair leading the way, number 59. And uh, in talking with Bud Grant, he said that if anybody on our team uh, deserves recognition this year, it has to be Matt Blair. He's having another all-pro season. Yes, he's having a good year. He's number 59, and you'll see him uh, just kind of jam things up and come back and get in on the tackle. He's been a pro bowler six times and will definitely, most definitely make it uh, once again. Matt Blair. Good speed for a linebacker that's been around a long time. 33 years of age in his 10th season. Four forced fumbles to his credit this year among his other accomplishments. Three wide receivers are in on third down. Marjorie joining Dalton McKinnon. Pressure on McMahon. He got the pass off as he was falling. A flag on the play. Peyton picks up about seven yards short of the first down, however. And a fine effort by McMahon under pressure to get that push pass off to Peyton. Probably a holding call, however, in the Bears' effort to protect him once the rush was on. Let's wait and see. And the Bears also did not make the first down, even if the play does go through, so they would probably punt, being that they're in their own territory. But I think you hit it right. I think they're going to call the Bears on some kind of holding because uh, the flag was thrown in that area, and McMahon was uh, dancing around in there. Mark Mullaney was involved in that. Mullaney uh, getting back into action. As uh, we mentioned, of course, Neil Elshar got to uh, play with Mullaney on injured reserve. Mullaney came back last week, is expected to get a fair amount of time today. The big man from Colorado State. Mike Ditka ready to send Marjoram in with the play, depending on uh, the situation here. Well, see, the choice was to, I guess they don't want to take the risk of having the Bears fourth and one. They're, they're, and declining the penalty because they might go for it. So they're going to give the, Bear, the Bears one Owen, another play. 65, offense, third down. Noah Jackson is charged with the hold. And uh, as you point out, the Vikings elect to uh, let the Bears try it third and long from their own 20 instead of giving them a fourth and one at their own 35. And Mike Ditka has gambled That's in right. similar situations. And today, why would he not? That's right, exactly. So, uh, they're going to try and stop the long pass. And out of the shotgun, McMahon. As Suey and Peyton lined up alongside him. They stay in the block. He's going deep for Galt. And it is just overthrown. Galt was in traffic with Hannon and Lee back there on the coverage. And Turner as well. And it looked like he was trying to pick himself a route there. And the ball was already in the air. Exactly. Tom Hannon did a good job because he got back there in front of Galt. Didn't make contact, but he made Galt adjust his steps. Otherwise, that pass would have been right on. He would have been gone for a touchdown. So the double coverage beat it, and Hannon was in the right spot. So the Bears will have to punt, and uh, for the first time, Ray Stakowitz will be the kicking for the Chicago Bears with Leo Lewis, the return man for the injured Rufus Vest, waiting for it at the 35 of Minnesota. Stakowitz, a former Green Bay Packer, hits a good punt. High, coming down to Leo Lewis, who bobbles, but now has running room. <laughs> he lost his shoe. Lewis all the way to the 26-yard line. The shoe made it to the 36-yard line. <laughs> he was running so fast, he ran right out of that shoe, and I'll tell you, Dennis Gentry was right on him. Actually, he should have fair caught. He should have fair caught that by all rules and standards of the NFL. And Curtis Gentry made contact with him. He bobbled the ball and took, took off straight up the middle. Dennis Gentry right there, number 29. And there goes Lewis right up the middle. Let's see where that shoe comes out. Does he run right out of it? He did. He ran right out of it. Nobody even hit him. Emory Moore hit on the tackle. The Vikings threatening once again. 34-yard punt return by Leo Lewis on the 43-yard punt by Stakowitz. He got burned on his first punt as a bear. It surely was not his fault. Made a good kick. Rolling on first down. Dale's up the middle. Wide open Brewer. And he has a Viking first down to the 11-yard line. Gary Fensick made the tackle. Steve Dills has been chucking that ball like, well, like Tommy Kramer in the early going here. And you know, the key to that was that uh, little partial rollout. As you'll see Dills go out, he's running away from the pocket, away from the bear blitz there. And there's Brewer. He turns around. He said, I'm so open. Get me the ball now. And Fenton comes over and makes the tackle. So Minnesota with early big plays, threatening again. They lead 3 0. First down at the 11 yard line of the Chicago Bears in the pro set. The give is to Galbraith, and he is stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. 
Mike Hartenstein with initial contact number 73. You know, in the season, the series between these two teams, the Vikings lead at 25-17 with two ties, and Bud Grant's teams have done very well against the Chicago Bears, 22-9 and nine since he took over the, as coach of the Minnesota Vikings. I think he has the Bears number, don't you? <laughs> well, as you, as you point out, they haven't won here since 1971. I think Osborne's the only player on the Bears team that was uh, in that game. 1971. It is second and nine. Dills up the middle and he was wide open. Darren Nelson could not hold on to the ball. Otherwise, he had six more. Boy, did he put a move on Otis Wilson, was trying to cover N Nelson coming out of the backfield, and he just straightened up Otis Wilson. Watch to the right of your screen now. You'll see it 55 on 20, and he thought Nelson was going to go to the outside. He went to the inside, and he was wide open. Well, they talk about Steve Dills not being a real big quarterback. He's actually a little over six feet, but he's thrown a bunch of little guys with this lineup they have in there due to yeah. injuries. LeCount, Lewis, Jones, Darren Nelson, his primary uh, receivers, are uh, all under six feet. So at least he's looking at them at the same level. <laughs> got to get it by the big guys. So far, he's doing it well. Third down. He's got time. Intended for Brewer, one of his taller targets. And he overthrew it. Fourth down. Brewers a 6'5", 235-pound tight end. Vikings have four tight ends in their lineup today. Casper, Brewer, Steve Jordan, and Joe Sensor. Of course, Sensor was on injured reserve until last week. He's not expected to see action today, but wanted badly to be in the lineup and part of the team. Number 81, Joe Sensor, coming off a knee injury. And Casper, as we mentioned, has yet to see action today. He's uh, been bothered by a hamstring. So another field goal try on fourth down from the 19-yard line. And Benny Ricardo pops it through with a 29-yarder. And the Vikings have jumped into a 6-0 lead. We still have 6.43 remaining in the first quarter from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, 68 degrees indoors. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back in Minneapolis where Leo Lewis's 34-yard punt return set up the second Minnesota field goal from the 29-yard line. Benny Ricardo, who will kick it off, has accounted for all six points for the Vikings. Are you still pretty good? Yeah. Willie Galt is the deep man, and of course the Vikings at seven and seven. They want a winning season. The Bears can get to 500 if they win their two final games, and both, believe it or not, still in playoff contention. Okay, the ball is going to come down around the 10-yard line. He doesn't kick it all that deep. It's Dennis Gentry from the nine for the Bears, and he runs into some heavy traffic at the 25. Took quite a lick there. And right now, let's take a look around the NFL for an update. Let's go to Brent Musburger. Tim, there's a lot of action around the league. Billy Sims fumbled for the Lions, and right away the Bengals capitalized, and you know who with, the battering ram, Pete Johnson. Bengals lead the Lions by seven points in the first quarter. Back to Tim and Johnny. Well, of course, I'd say fans in Chicago and Minnesota are watching that one with some interest. And there was every chance that Cincinnati, a pretty good team having a difficult season, could win at home against the Lions today, and they've taken the lead. First down. Lions need a victory to clinch the NFC Central. Blair pass. And it's Zooey to Peyton wide open. Walter Peyton in a sprint to the end zone. One man can catch a man. He is in. Touchdown, Walter Peyton. Well, Matt Suey. And it turned out that that was a lateral, and it made it look like a pass, and as long as he's parallel with the quarterback, it is a lateral. The Vikings bit on it as being a short pass as they put Peyton in motion and down the field, and Suey throws his first pass. He takes the swing pass out here, and McMahon throws it out there, and it is a lateral. Indeed, everybody forgot about it, and uh, Suey just runs he took off running and then throws the ball down there just like Walter Payton does who has three touchdown passes and then Payton <laughs> turns it on towards the end zone a little straight arm right here to get him his couple of extra steps and he goes into the end zone touchdown Walter Payton Chicago Bears that was Willie Teal who was the last man to try and knock him out of bounds before he made the end zone good effort by Teal but you knew Walter saw end zone wasn't anybody going to keep him out at that point and Bob Thomas with a point after so the Bears, uh, striking with one big play, have moved in front. 6.21 remains in Minneapolis's Metrodome. The Bears 7, the Vikings 6. 
an unlikely passing combination <laughs> if you've ever heard of one number 26 the Penn State fullback to Walter Payton who's caught a few of course and has even chucked a couple of touchdown passes of his own the kickoff is taken by Nelson at the five tripped up with an open field tackle by Dewerson and collapsed at the 21 yard line for the Vikings. Let's see it one more time. And one thing, Mike Ditka does have imagination. There's the lateral play. Now, what really makes it is that Suey has to dodge a couple of people like he's taking off on a run. Everybody forgot about Peyton. Suey stops. That's pretty good presence there by Suey, who gets banged after he throws the ball. And you can't, these guys keep trying to hit Walter Peyton high. You can't do it. If he's going to tackle him, he's got to dive into him and knock him off stride. You just can't do it that way. Bears get a touchdown. Yeah, that was fun. I yeah. like that kind of play fun for Bears fans not so much fun for the Vikings let's see what they can do they started the game with a big play of their own even though it was an interference call they went to the distance play action Dills on first down up the middle and incomplete Leo Lewis could not hold on as the ball arrived so did Gary Fensick and it was a little bit high for the little guy so no catch there's Gary Fensick who's been out for many 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 weeks with a severely pulled groin muscle just pulled the muscle right away from the bone and it just takes ages. Uh, Dave Dorson came in and did a good job for Fensick while he was out. But now uh, Gary Fensick back in as the Vikings. Looks like neither team is going to uh, hold back today. Actually, it sounds like the injury to Sammy White may be quite similar to uh, that of Gary Fensick. They had him re-examined on Friday, his groin pull, and it sounds like it's a, a similar situation of that muscle being pulled away from the bone. The pitch out to Nelson. Nelson cuts it up inside. A nice piece of running by Nelson for a gain of about six. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Vikings and the National Football League is prohibited. Interesting situation here. Steve Dills, we have two quarterbacks who led the nation in passing uh, in, in their senior years in college. Steve Dills when he was at Stanford and, of course, Jim McMahon when he was at BYU. Led the entire nation, both of them. Now Dills is off to a fine start here this afternoon. Third and four. Rolling on third down. It's complete to Lewis. Was he in or out? He was out. Could not keep two feet in. Nice catch by Lewis. Dills just got a little bit too far outside. And it was an out-of-bounds out of play. Okay, and notice the key for the Vikings so far has been uh, taking Dills out of the pocket. He didn't quite... Oh, boy. I don't know. We ought to get another look at that, baby. Pretty good foot action as you look at Archie Manning, who is out with that thyroid problem, and he will play no more this year. Well, his old team, the New Orleans Saints, in front of Philadelphia. 7 to nothing today in the second period. We'll be tracking that one. It affects the wild card situation. A Ken Stabler pass for a touchdown. Fourth down, and Greg Coleman for the Vikings. Kicking to McKinnon at the Bears, 35. Dennis McKinnon, a good return into Vikings territory at the 49, where Fred McNeil hauled him down. Of course, McKinnon will be treated with a new respect. He ran one back 53 last week against the Green Bay Packers to almost put the Bears back on top. We'll be back. You be the judge now. It does appear he drags his right foot and touches inside, but did his left foot go out of bounds there first? But he did dip the toe on his right foot was in. Uh, it's really a close call. You have to have good eyes. But the official was right down there, so. Well, it is bare football regardless. First down at the 49-yard line of Minnesota. He leads seven to six. Warhead in motion to pitch to Suey. Suey with a good hole and a fine block running hard for a first down to the 31-yard line. Becker and Moorhead and Peyton all involved in the blocking over there. Tom Hannon made the tackle. Well executed play by the Bears. Yes, they got through Studwell and Matt Blair on that play, as you're going to see. Uh, 55 and 59 roam over there to make the tackle, and here comes Kurt Becker, 79, to throw that block, and he just uh, uh, pushes his man out, and Suey does a nice job of turning up the field at the right time and getting some big yardage. He is well over 500 yards this year, the first time for Matt Suey in his career that he's rushed for that many in a season. 509 coming in, 18 on that pickup for a first down Chicago. A little play action. McMahon for Galt almost picked off. Tommy Hannon got a hand on it, number 45. Pass uh, sailed a little bit. But again, that looked to me as though Galt was 
was trying to find his way through that uh, traffic down there, Johnny. Well, Willie Gold has a little bit to learn about getting away from jams and stuff. That time uh, he was jammed, knocked a little bit off stride, and uh, uh, for somebody who is as quick as he is, uh, he should be able to get away from that a little easier. But he's just a rookie, and it takes a little time um, to get that down, the little stutter steps to get away from that jam. As New Orleans has taken a, a lead over Philadelphia, if the Saints win that game, the, the Bears' uh, playoff chances are shot. Cincinnati in front of Detroit still, as we saw on our report from Brent Musburger earlier. Second and ten here. The Vikings into a four-man front. Sideliner and a missed read there on the route, either by the quarterback or the intended receiver, Willie Gold again. It was going inside. McMahon threw it outside. So it is third and ten, and we see Seattle leading the Giants seven to three in the first quarter. Cleveland and Houston are tied at three, an important game for the Browns. Houston, of course, uh, out of things. Now you talk about a, a misfire. McMahon throws one way, and Galt was running a post the exact opposite way. So somebody missed something, either an audible. It was probably a missed audible by, by Galt. Lucas Bess and John Swain have come in defensively on this third and ten as the Vikings are looking for pass. Three wide receivers. McMahon up into the pocket now takes off, and he is met by the safety Joey Browner, number 47, and uh, stopped short of the first down at the 25-yard line. Joey Browner, the number one pick from USC, comes in in the five and six-back situations for the Vikings, some of the fives and all of the sixes. Fourth down as the Vikings hold on this time, and the Bears will have Bob Thomas attempting from the 33-yard line, a 43-yard attempt. Thomas. He is 11 of 20 and has not been all that effective uh, beyond 40 yards. Well, he's kicking indoors today. Let's see if it helps him. It does. Bob Thomas with a 42 yard field goal officially. And so the Chicago Bears got three out of it as the Vikings stopped them at the 25. And with 331 remaining in the first quarter, the Bears lead it 10 to 6. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back in Minneapolis. The Bears by four, 10 to six. And Bob Thomas will kick it off. And Nelson has it inside the five. Aaron Nelson running well today and has it up over the 25 to the 28 yard line where Dave Dewerson made the stop. Don't forget this Eastern Division. The title is on the line today. The Dallas Cowboys and the Washington Redskins both already in the playoffs, but Dallas going for the title and the home field advantage. It is coming up later today on CBS Sports. Two 12 and two teams, Cowboys and Indians time. And it will be seen everywhere except in uh, very few places, including, unfortunately, for the fans looking in Minneapolis today. That game will not be seen on WCCO television today. First down for the Vikings. You are getting to see them, and they are trailing at 10-6 here with 322 remaining first quarter. Play action, flare pass, blockers in front, but the Bears stripped through there as Terry LeCount was given no opportunity to bring the ball upfield. Bears covered well with Mike Richardson, number 27, and linebacker Otis Wilson. All out there on the defensive play. A pickup of about three for LeCount will be second and seven. As you mentioned, Al Harris is at one of the linebacker spots in place of uh, Gary Campbell. He hasn't been playing because of injury. hasn't played linebacker all that much. We have to expect the Vikings to try and pick on Harris a little bit. Second and seven. In motion goes Leo Lewis. Dills finds himself some room and gets to Brewer. First down, Bob Brewer. One on one against Mike Singletary and Dills did a fine job of picking up his secondary receiver. If indeed he was the secondary receiver, it looked like he was looking farther downfield. Good play. Yes, it was as he found the hole there and uh, there goes Dills out of the pocket, finds Brewer down the field, down the sidelines, and he was just barely in bounds as he ran down the sidelines and then stepped out. Bob Brewer. So both of these teams are moving the ball pretty well. It is an offensive game so far. Dills is 5 of 11, 66 yards, and the Vikings have a first down at their own, at the Bears, pardon me, 46-yard line. Two tight ends are in. 
And it is Darren Nelson getting about a yard to the 45 yard line. Well, let's take a look at that Eagles Saints game. Here's Brent Musburger. Tim, the Saints have scored first. Kenny Staver will back out here against the Eagles, and has he got protection? Now, Wayne Wilson circles out of the backfield, gets in behind the safety man, and it's 7 0 right now. Saints over the Eagles. Let's go back to Tim and Johnny. Well, both the Vikings and the Bears need New Orleans to lose in terms of wild card circumstances, so they are uh, most interested in that score. And so far, the Saints are in front. Second and nine here. Great drop for Dills, forced out again, and throwing on the run for Lewis incomplete. Lewis could not bring that one down, got his fingertips on it, and that was all. Richardson on the coverage. Keep saying these Vikings receivers are finding themselves very busy young men. Uh, Lewis and Jones getting time they don't normally get during the season. Lewis had only nine catches coming into the game. Sam McCollum and Sammy White both out with injuries. Of course, Rashad retiring last season. And so suddenly, uh, Terry LeCount, who did figure to be the solid third man, is a starter, and he's been hurt playing with a sore ankle today. And he's in now with Lewis and the rookie Mike Jones. Great drop for Dills. Pressure from the Bears. And the pass was deflected. And diving for an intercept try was Terry Schmidt, number 44. But it was Steve McMichael, number 76, who got the hand on the football, bringing up a fourth down. So good Bears pass rush on those last two downs. Johnny has uh, forced the Vikings into a punting situation. And a pretty good pass rush without uh, much in the way of blitzes. They did bring Singletary that time. The Bears, the last two or three games, have not blitzed as much as they have uh, over the years, you might say. Greg Coleman into punt, standing at his own 40-yard line. Dennis McKinnon, the deep man at the 10. Of course, in that pass rush, the Bears missing Dan Hampton today. That knee injury suffered a few games back, bothered him too much last week against Green Bay. He told me yesterday the pain was something he had never experienced before. That could be a dandy punt. And it is down at the six-yard line. Diving in to make the dive was to make the uh, touch was Joey Browner. And a fine kick by Greg Coleman. So the Bears will start from the shadow of their goal line. They're going to spot it just over the five-yard line. Let's watch Joey Browner. He's uh, kind of like Joey on the spot this time as the punt took a little backspin. It was a, a long punt, but it bounced back the other way, so the Bears will have very bad field position as you look at Nick Saturday's rundown. Well, we've got the NFL football on Saturday. The Giants at Washington at 12.30 Eastern time, followed by college basketball. The Louisville Cardinals with a win over number five ranked Iowa against the champion NC State Wolfpack. Jim Belvano's crew. It'll be an exciting day on CBS Sports next Saturday. First down play for the Bears. Matt Suey drags it out for about four yards. A flag is down and probably Somebody grabbed a little iron on route. I think so. That's what happened. There was a face mask infraction. Matt Suey has certainly come into his own this season. The trainer coming on the field as we now spot a Viking player down, and it looks like Charlie Johnson, the nose man, number 65, will be getting some medical attention. And meanwhile, the referee, Tom Dooley, is going to march it off against Minnesota, bringing the ball up to the 15 yard line the 16 they spot it and it'll be uh, about a foot needed for Face the mask. first down defense second down second and about a foot to go they're not giving us numbers but it might have been uh, Doug Martin I think 79 as Charlie Johnson is apparently all right the seven year man from Colorado came over in the deal from the Eagles a year ago in the mainstay in that 3-4 defense that the Vikings have gone to. Duck White will come in to replace him, number 72. So we have second and about a, uh, about a half a yard. This is what you call a free play. And now a little mix up here on the Bears' sideline. They had Saldi going off and then back in and now off again. Moorhead is in a tight end. And uh, whether they go with the free down here or not, we'll find out. McKinnon comes wide right, Galt wide left. One tight end, so you might expect him to throw the ball here. And they pitch to Peyton. Shakes off one man and has the first down. 22-yard line. It was Dennis Johnson who had a chance to catch him behind the line, but 
Tom Hannon had to make the tackle upfield. Well, this is where you see Walter Payton is uh, third in the all-time NFL rushing list because Dennis Johnson, 52, got through the uh, little gap there and had the free shot at him. Payton just gave him a little straight arm and dipped away from him, got outside, and managed to get the first down before he's finally knocked down. From the 21-yard line, the Bears will now have a little breathing room, having to start from their five after a good punt by Coleman and the downing by Browner. 486 yards rushing coming into the ball game. Well, in, uh, pardon me, we'll get back to that stat. They've got McMahon in trouble. Upfield to Willie Gold, and it is incomplete. McMahon got the ball off with the pressure from White at the sideline, and Willie Galt showed his hurdling ability going over the drinks table by the Vikings bench as he tried to catch up with that ball at the sideline. Well, it was Martin who forced him out of the pocket right away. There was a missed block there. Andy Frederick kind of uh, had a missed assignment there. I think it was a mental mistake, and then here comes White to force him out, and McMahon did a good job of getting the ball out, uh, getting the ball off, and uh, Willie Galt could have really caught that ball. Man is 0 for 4 in passing at this point with second down from the 21-yard line. Walter Payton's uh, rushing stats coming into the game, 1,179 yards, fourth in the conference. Crowd uh, whistling at the two leaders. The one and there's a sack and a loose ball, but he manages to hold on. Pressure by Doug Martin, number 79. Catching Jim McMahon back at the 13-yard line of Chicago. They'll bring up a third and very long, and that brings on four new defenders for the Vikings. Browner, Mullaney, Lucas Best comes in, and John Swain, number 29. Boy, he was in the backfield before the ball got back there almost. Well, the Bears pass attack with the quarter winding down, five seconds remaining, consists of one completion by Matt Suey. And there's the gun ending the first quarter. And uh, the Chicago Bears on the strength of the Suey to Payton touchdown and a pair of field goals lead the Vikings 10 to 6. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Chevrolet. America is on the move and Chevrolet is supplying the wheels. Chevrolet and you taking charge. AC Delco, General Motors Corporation. Quality replacement parts for just about anything that moves. AC Delco is the way to go. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris, we are back at the Metrodome with a third and long, and Jim McMahon in the shotgun formation is standing at a seven-yard line. Big pressure by the Vikings pass defense, creating problems from the goal line, a screen pass for Peyton. Two blockers in front, and a good job by number 29, John Swain, to make sure that Peyton could not come back in to the field of play with the blockers in front, and so the Bears will have to punt. Now, there was a little tip-off on that play because Brian Bashnigal came into the game in Willie Galt's spot, and you knew they were going to throw over that side for his blocking ability. Next week, of course, the Saturday game will begin at 12 o'clock Eastern time. The New York Giants at Washington. The game could be important for the Redskins, depending on the outcome of their game later against Dallas today. And then college basketball follows North Carolina State and Louisville. Stackowitz punt taken at the 32-yard line by Leo Lewis. Lewis has had one long punt return, but not this time. As they drop him at the 40-yard line, Brian Cabral, number 54. So the Vikings will start from their 40 yard line with 1442 to play in the first half and they trail the Bears by four despite a statistical advantage in the first period. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris as we are back at the Metrodome outside here in Minnesota We're actually kind of warm day about 32 degrees with snow falling. Door 68. Darren Nelson picks up about Eight, maybe nine, as they will move it out to the 49-yard line of Minnesota with Al Harris making the tackle. And now let's find out more about the Lions and the Bengals from Brent Musburger in New York. Tim, we've got a couple of developments. Kenny Anderson and the Bengals, they were on this drive. Bobbled the snap. Kenny picked it up. He was injured on this play. 
He left the game. Pete Johnson scored the second touchdown, 14-0, back to Tim. Pete Johnson, the big guy, but what a play by Anderson. Turn a fumble into a play that set up the score, and uh, that hurts the Lions. On second and a yard here, Tony Galbraith was stopped short of the first down. A stack of Bears, Hartenstein, McMichael, Otis Wilson, and a loss of maybe a half yard on the play. Third down, a yard and a half. That Detroit game is much bigger to the Vikings because they're in it for the uh, division title, and that's a that's a big chance because uh, uh, if they win today and the Lions lose, then they're uh, they're what tied, aren't they? But Detroit would have to lose next week also. The Bears only have the wild card chance, so it's that New Orleans, San Francisco. Those two games are important to the Bears. Pass up the middle is complete for the first down to Galbraith. Dills dropped back almost to the original line of scrimmage and wound up throwing a two-yard pass. Galbraith was just over the line of scrimmage, and they have the first down at the Bears 48. Al Harris on the tackle. Harris getting the start for Gary Campbell. Of course, Campbell missed much of the season with a knee injury, was on injured reserve, and came back the last couple of weeks and has played well, but that knee bothering him. So Al Harris, who's had a toe problem of his own, gets to play at linebacker his second start at that position this season. Play action, fake pitch out, and wide open the tight end, Brewer, and he's still going. First down, Brewer, to the 20-yard line of the Bears. He's pulled down by Frazier and Fenson, but the big guy from Mankato State comes up with another big play. A uh, great play by Dillis. Watch the action of the fake of the pitch off to the right. There it is, and then turns, and Brewer just goes right down and splits the zones. Todd Bell on the coverage there, too, and Brewer gets away from that and takes it down. Bob Brewer, who has become a key receiver in this football game. But uh, the man you got to be impressed with so far is Dills. He's looked very good. Good catch for Brewer, 68 yards, and he is down for the Vikings in scoring position. Three wide receivers, LeCount, Lewis, and Jones. One setback is Nelson. He has the ball, and a little crack, but Singletary with a fine tackle for the Bears, number 50, closed it down. Nelson had some daylight and all of a sudden ran out of it. That's right. If Singletary had not hung on for that tackle, Nelson would have been gone for big yardage. Pickup of two. It'll bring up second and eight. The ball at the 19 of the Bears. Singletary just took in the defense, gives everybody the signal, and we're off and running again here. Chicago leading 10 to 6. A pair of field goals by Ricardo. The scores for the Vikings. Gordon in motion behind the ball. Nelson is caught from behind by Dent, number 95. The rookie starting for the injured Dan Hampton at right defensive end. And there'll be a loss of a yard on the play. And nobody even hit Dent as he got through a little crease there and got the play before it even was started. They tried the counter, which made Nelson get a late start. And here comes Dent, number 95, to make the tackle. So. The Vikings have a third and long passing situation. Richard Dent, number seven choice from Tennessee State, did not see much action at all in the early part of the season. The injury is getting to play and show us stuff. Schmidt and Dewerson in defensively on third and long. For the Vikings and the blitz comes up with a sack. It is Richard Dent. Harry Schmidt was blitzing from the corner position, but the quick footed defensive end got there ahead of Schmidt. Good job on two consecutive plays by Dent. And number 45, Gary Fensick was blitzing too. Nelson picked him up, but there were so many guys coming that there was no chance, and that's the first time the Bears have done that for quite a while. They had too many rushers, and uh, Vikings couldn't pick them all up. Look at that. Backed up to the 28-yard line on fourth down. Ricardo will attempt from the 36, a 46-yard try. Might be a little out of his range. We'll find out. Not today it isn't. Not wide. It was wide. He had the leg for sure, but he missed it wide. Benny Ricardo. So the Vikings come up empty with 10:04 remaining in the first half. The Bears hold on to a four-point margin, 10 to six here at the Metrodome. But Grant, he would look the same if the score was reversed or if he was leading by a bunch more or <laughs> losing by a bunch more. It is first down for Chicago. McMahon is one of five at this point in the game. And there's a little inside handoff to Suey. He's got running room and a first down. 
Matt Zui. I think he's starting to believe he's Walter Payton. He has really been running well this season. Willie Teal made the tackle, and Suey, as we said, came into the game with more than 500 yards. Watch the right guard, 79. He's going to take McNeil, number 54. He's to the left your screen, knocks him out of the play, and that was what allowed Suey to get up the field and get some big yardage. Kurt Becker, number 79, and good running by Suey, finally brought down by number 37, Willie Teal. First down from the Bears 43 yard line with 924 remaining in the half. They come out on a wide pro set. Give us the Peyton. He's got Becker in front of him. Cutting it back inside over the 50. Picked up about seven, maybe eight yards, depending on the spot. They'll put it at the 49 yard line of Minnesota. John Turner, the safety man number 27, made the tackle. Now let's take a quick look at some other scores. Any second now. <laughs> there you are. New Orleans in front of Philadelphia 7 to 3. So the Eagles with a field goal and Buffalo in front of San Francisco 7 to 3. Those are key games involving the wild card. Look at this. Houston hurting Cleveland's chances 17 to 3. Van Horn has come in for Andy Frederick at right tackle for the Bears on second and two and Peyton's got a lot of running room. Has the first down to the 41 yard line of the Vikings. Dennis Johnson and Tom Hannon, 52 and 45, making the tackle for Minnesota. And there's uh, the career mm -hmm. numbers against Minnesota. They don't like to see him uh, come on the field against the Vikings. Well, look at that. He averages 4.8 per carry, once rushed for 275 yards for an NFL record against this very team, the Minnesota Vikings. He's always done very well against the Vikes. He's done very well just about against anybody. First down, they spot the ball at the 42-yard line of the Vikings. They lead it by four. There's Peyton again, and the Vikings do a good job this time. They had people in the backfield, and then they wouldn't let him turn the corner. Leading the uh, charge in there was Doug Martin, and then the cornerback, Carl Lee, the rookie from South Carolina State, made the uh, tackle on him. You know, an interesting thing uh, with Walter Payton, he's pursuing Jimmy Brown's record, but so is Franco Harris, who rushed over for over 100 yards yesterday. And I think Payton is about 500 yards behind Franco Harris, and it's going to be kind of interesting to see which one gets to the record first, the immortal Jimmy Brown's record. You know, Payton's going to end up beating Franco Harris out, but also there's that magic of uh, being the first man to break Brown's record. Gain of only a yard, second and nine. Suey has a good hole. Matt Suey crashes over the 30 to the 26-yard line where Hannon made the tackle uh, after the trip up by Johnny Turner. And you're going to see some excellent blocking. I hope you can see Peyton, 34, come out here and block on 54 right here in front of your screen. Here comes Peyton on McNeil. A beautiful block to knock him down. Suey turns up the field, gets by Studwell, and gets some big yardage. So Walter Clayton... Uh, does his job as a blocker as he has throughout his entire career and Suey's having himself quite a quite a football game. He's got 55, 55 yards, yards and, five and about carries. five carries. That's yeah. a pretty good average. First down on the 26 yard line as the running attack of the Bears we had problems last week against Green Bay. It's been restored. And this is Peyton trying to turn the corner. Picks up about four. He's tripped up by Elshire, number 73. The right defensive end. If you're fans of uh, Marshall College, we certainly want to correct that the rookie standout of the Vikings, Carl Lee, is an alumnus of Marshall, not South Carolina State. Look at that, 11,383 yards going into this game for Walter Payton. Second and five from the 26-yard line. McKinnon goes wide right. We mentioned that McMahon is one of five. He has not had to throw the ball to move it against the Vikings defense thus far. And he'll run again. Suey. This time, Fred McNeil played off the block of Walter Payton and did an effective job, but Suey, with his battering style, picks up about three, maybe four yards. Okay, you have the same matchup. You're going to see Payton out in front on the block and a couple of linemen too, Jimbo Covert, but there's the block. He doesn't knock McNeil down 54. McNeil stays on his feet, but as you said, Suey with that pile driving style when they get ready to make the tackle got down, almost got the first down. Three wide receivers, Moorhead, uh, three uh, tight ends, pardon me, Moorhead, Saldi, and Dunsmore come in on this third and short situation for the Bears. 
set one on the wing. That's Moorhead. Now he's in motion. And that's play action. Good fake. The pass for Moorhead just off the mark with Hannon chasing him on the coverage. And McMahon, who can really hide that football in a nonchalant style, almost had himself a touchdown pass to Moorhead, but it will be fourth down instead. You're right. See how he puts it on his hip here? And uh, Hannon just was too smart to fall for it. If the pass had been a little shorter, they might have had a touchdown. It was a little bit overthrown. So that's why McMahon was a little bit upset with himself. It was not a perfect pass as Bob Thomas comes on to kick the field goal. Thomas from the 26-yard line will be a 36-yard attempt. And it is wide to the right. So Ricardo and Thomas are running into problems with the uh, air conditioning or the heating in here today <laughs> at the Metrodome as they have both missed in their last field goal tries. We'll be right back. So the Minnesota Vikings will take over at their own 20 yard line following the missed field goal try by Bob Thomas of the Bears. He Bills brings out the Vikings. Nelson in motion, play action to make the red one almost intercepted by Singletary. It was intended for Darren Nelson, number 20, and Singletary ranging back from the middle linebacker position nearly had himself an intercept. Yeah, he had nothing but pay dirt in front of him. Number 50 comes right in front of it. As you can see, Nelson coming down, and the pass was a line drive shot, and here comes Singletary from his middle linebacker spot. Almost had himself a touchdown. Well, Dills is 7 for 16 and 97 yards and has thrown some good passes today, but if there is a, a flaw in his style, it is that kind of a pass. He tends to throw the ball on a line and a low one at that. Ted Brown in for the first time. Number 23. They fake the pass to him to give to Nelson. The Bears did not buy it. Mike Hartenstein, number 73, was in exactly the right place. Nelson ran right into him. Yes, it was Hartenstein that got across on Tim Irvin, number 76, and just jammed up the play, was on the turf, but uh, was able to make the uh, tackle from almost a laying down position. Mike Hartenstein, and look at those sacks. He ranks right up there. And he's one of those many players that is now wearing the neck collar for protection of the whiplash on the neck. Very advisable for anybody at any age level. Lots of nearly six on the play. Third and 16. Lot formation right for the Vikings. Big drop to Gills this time. Up the middle, he's got a man open, and it's out to the 30-yard line for Mike Jones, and will be very close to the first down, depending on the spot. Gills might have dug himself out of there with the rookie Mike Jones from Tennessee State coming up with the tackle and Bell and Singletary making the uh, hit. Now Dills had plenty of time to pass and watch the adjustment in here just to find the little hole and dips under here and almost got the first down. I think he might be a touch short. Good effort. Makes, yeah, good effort. Now, of course, you, would you say he should have been downfield a little farther to catch the ball? Well, or? that's what you say when you watch the game <laughs> films. Hey, get down another step or two. Always know where the first down is. And it looks like uh, he is a touch short. So they did not give him the uh, generosity of a good spot over the 30-yard line, which he needed to get the first it looks down. Looks like they're going to go for it, huh? Fourth in a football. Well, this is a gutsy call. Down on your own 29 and a half. But as you say, Tim, what do you got to lose? Exactly. Right? Right. A division title. <laughs> yeah, right. They got to they gotta go for it. Ricky Young is in the lineup. In motion to tight end Brewer. They give it to Ted Brown, and he has the first down. Brown's first carry back from his injury. The shoulder injury. Bangs over the 30-yard line, and that gets appreciative applause from Ted Brown fans. Al Harris and Mike Singletary made the stop for the Chicago Bears. Ted Brown says he doesn't like to practice too much, does he? I <laughs> loved his comment. He said, I don't like to practice 95% of the time, and the other 5% I don't practice anyway. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, you know what a Bud Grant organization will have to go out there and pay his dues like everybody else. First down. <laughs> That is Ricky Young, number 34, a nine-year veteran from Jackson State, picking up three. And Singletary, uh, as usual, getting his head right in the middle of things and 
knocked his helmet off that time. Well, he didn't expect Young to run right into where everybody was. Uh, Young uh, just kind of ran into the action. There goes uh, Singletary's helmet, number 50, down with the hit. Pick up Maybe two. He's always breaking other people's helmets. <laughs> Singletary has 18 broken helmets. I think he might have broken his own that time. Second and eight. Wants to go, quick drop, and it's complete. Leo Lewis, number 87, has a first down at the 44-yard line. Perfectly timed pass play. A beautiful precision pass. The quarterback takes these steps. One, two, three, four, five. Lewis cuts to the outside. The ball's on the way, and then you take a pass like that, you cannot stop it unless you go into a zone and jam him and, and uh, ruin his pattern. Leo Lewis from the University of Missouri. Time as the really badly injured receiving core of the Vikings has suffered all season long. Leo Lewis delivering here against the Bears. 204 remaining in the first half. Bills has a man open in the middle. Ted Brown for a first down of the Vikings to the 34 yard line. Gary Fensick and Leslie Frazier combining on the tackle and Frazier getting up slowly. Nice instinct by Steve Deals on that one because uh, Hartenstein and Osborne, they put the rush on so quickly, they forced him forward in the pocket, and he saw that little gap. You see Osborne being double teamed, but he did force him to move forward, and Deals alertly spotted Brown down the middle for a first down. Good play by Steve Deals. Heads up. Well, he's favoring his knee as Leslie Frazier, and as you saw, it looked like he just got kind of spun around. And they are attending to him now, the six interception man of the Chicago Bears, Leslie Frazier. We'll be back at the Metrodome in a moment. Nice party for Frank tonight on CBS. The 35 yard line at his first down after the two minute warning. And Leslie Frazier both uh, creating a timeout situation. Frazier was helped off the field, and it is intercepted. Gary Fensick. The first turnover of this half, Gary Fensick picking off the pass from Steve Dills on the first play after the two-minute warning. Tim Irwin made the tackle. And Gary Fensick getting back into the action after a long, lonely season on the sideline. Here he is at the bottom of your screen, number 45. He goes back to his deep zone. He watches Dills. He's just watching Dills, watching the quarterback. LeCount comes across. He has a step on his man there. But there was Fensick just to uh, come in, make the interception, the first one for him in a long time because he hasn't played. Gary Fensick back in action. So the Bears will take over, and they hold the lead here as time winds down in the first half. 148 to play, Bears 10-6. to six. Chicago fans tracking the New Orleans-Philadelphia score. The Saints lead at halftime over the Eagles 7-3. to three. The New Orleans victory eliminates the Bears from any wild card opportunity. They have the football and the lead. 147 to play first half. Play action. Man, deep. For Willie Gold, and there'll be interference call. Not much question about that one either. I believe it was Carl Lee, number 39. There he is, number 39, the rookie from Marshall. And uh, did Willie have a chance to catch that football? Johnny. Oh, it didn't look like he was trying to catch it. He put his hands up there. Now, you can put your hands up. The rules say that you can put your hands up. But uh, did he make some contact, too? That's the key. I think he made some contact before the ball arrived, and that's the reasoning for the penalty. But you can put your hands up. That's a new, the a defender fairly new rule. The defender about, yeah. can put your hands up. But he... Pass interference, 39, defense, first down. So Carl Lee getting the start on the corner had to contend with Willie Galt's world-class speed and elected to play it safe as the ball was coming down and safe turned into a, an interference penalty. So the Bears threatening again. Walter Payton up the left side, cuts it inside over the 10 to the nine-yard line where Scott Studwell, number 55, made the stop. It'll be second down. They will need about six for a first down. They need to get to the four-yard line, do the Bears, for a first down. John Swain has come in on the corner for Carl Lee. The ball right at the 10-yard line. McKinnon goes right. 
Galt comes left. Peyton and Suey in the backfield. One minute remaining first half. McMahon gets it off to Matt Suey. Suey gets to the five-yard line. It appears he will be short of the first down. Fred McNeil made the tackle. And either a very good defensive rush by the Vikings or a little mix-up on the play by the Bears. But McMahon found himself in some difficulty. Yes, and he got out of it nicely. He was really being harassed and adjusted in the pocket and got the pass off. Bears call timeout with 49 seconds remaining in the first half. So they are on the doorstep of the Vikings holding their 10-6 lead with plenty of time to add to it. Brian with Johnny Morris. The Bears need a yard to get first down. They're at the five-yard line of the Vikings. But Grant looking on and hoping that his four-man front, Holloway, Johnson, White, Martin can do the job here. Bears have three tight ends in to provide the power blocking if that's the way to go. Four hit in motion. Suey has a good hole and has the first down. Stopped short of the touchdown. And it was Matt Blair and Willie Teal who made the tackle. But Chicago now has first and goal from the two-yard line. And the Bears take another timeout. There is a Viking player down. It's uh, Matt Blair. Matt who was hit, Blair. hit by Walter Payton that time. He really jolted Blair. Well, coming up at halftime, of course, uh, all of the interesting playoff possibilities around the league with halftime scores will be discussed by Brennan Irv and highlights of that action and a preview of the big game later today that most of you will see. The Redskins and the Cowboys, the showdown in Dallas and... That is coming up at halftime of our game here from the Metrodome. And, of course, uh, those of you in the Minnesota area will not get to see the Redskins-Dallas game, unfortunately, as it says uh, on the screen in the Minnesota area. NFL broadcast rules do not permit the telecast of both of these games into this, this market. It's going to be everywhere else in the country, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think there are only two or three spots that won't be carrying it. Okay, so first and goal for the Chicago Bears. 43 seconds remaining in the first half. Wing formation for the Bears. And now Peyton in motion off the wing. Fake to Suey, and they lob it up for Moorhead. Touchdown! Well, a little more razzle-dazzle than you might expect on a first down from the three-yard line. But it paid off. Yep, that's the old Mike Ditka influence that time as McMahon just uh, rolled out and was going to go back as uh, Emery Moorhead uh, was to tie up on the left side and kind of get lost in the crowd. And two linebackers put the old blitz on him. Here comes Johnson and uh, McMahon just threw it up over as soon as uh, Moorhead was able to clear. And that was an easy one. So easy that you had to be careful you don't drop it. Emery Moorhead, touchdown as the Bears take a 16 to 6 lead, possibly 17. Thomas for the point after. Ash Nagel, the holder. Uh-oh. And it is wide. It might have been tipped on route. I think it was. It's quite a stack up along the line. Credit to the Vikings, long known for their kick blocking ability. And it may be that they got a piece of that one. We won't see Thomas miss the point after too long. Let's see if we can pick out a purple shirted arm reaching up there and see the two purple jerseys behind the line of scrimmage you can see it's uh, Blair is is one of them but it was uh, the other man that was it Elshire might have been Elshire, Elshire. It looked like he got a hand on it uh, usually it's uh, Blair who has 20 block kicks during his career as Mike Ditka says to Bob uh, Thomas that's okay we got a 10 point lead you'll get him next time but that's a key block because the Vikings are down only by 10 instead of 11 so a touchdown and a field goal gets you back in a tie whereas Otherwise, they would have needed at least two touchdowns or a touchdown and two field goals. Well, again, the uh, Vikings are still with an outside shot at the NFC Central title and an opportunity for the wild card. Each team involved in this game must win its two remaining games for anything good to happen to them. So uh, clearly, uh, they're having their own little uh, mini playoff game here today or mini Super Bowl to see who... Uh, Stays alive for that final week of the season. 
And the Bears so far have the 10 point margin. Thomas is kicked off. Taken at the eight yard line. Aaron Nelson and Nelson took quite a lick from behind. Got it out to the 24 yard line. Pat Dunsmore making the hit and number 20 Kevin Potter getting in on it. There's a man Bud Grant who has won more professional football games than any coach except George Papa Bear Hallis who recently passed away so Bud Grant uh, has a lot of victories 282 coming up at halftime again don't forget uh, with those important games around the league affecting the playoff picture we'll bring you up to date and have a preview of the upcoming game that follows our telecast in most parts of the country the Redskins in Dallas first down Minnesota Bill has time hits his man Bob Brewer and Brewer has a first down. Bob Brewer having himself a very fine afternoon. They had hoped to get Dave Casper into the action, but his hamstring still bothering him. And Brewer uh, has been certainly doing the job in the first half. Todd Bell pushed him out of bounds. They get it up to the 25 of Minnesota with 27 seconds remaining. It's hard to believe that time that Mike Singletary, number 50, had to cover Ted Brown down the sidelines by himself in this kind of a situation with 25 seconds to left to go in the half. down a little unusual formation here for the Vikings they get everybody into the pass pattern Hills and he overthrew number 89 Mike Jones and it may be that Jones didn't run the correct pattern the rookie from Tennessee State well he ran the correct pattern it's just that there were a couple of player bears between he and the quarterback and Dills just uh, threw it too high to make sure he didn't get an interception and it just carried way over everybody 22 seconds on the clock he was actually open <laughs> Bikes haven't had a touchdown in a while. They got nothing last Monday night against Detroit. Dills. Deep for Nelson and double coverage and he threw it out of bounds. Well, that was a case where the Vikings came back trying to get a back on a linebacker and they had Nelson on Otis Wilson, but that time the Bears changed up their defense and Fensick dropped way off and they had ended up with double coverage so goes to show you you see something that looks good one play and then come back a couple plays later and the, the defense is entirely different and that's of course Buddy Ryan's whole philosophy is you change up from down to down brings up third down with 16 seconds left for the Vikings to try and make something happen here in the closing seconds of the half only by 10 Out of the shotgun, they give it to Ted Brown inside, and the Bears close that off immediately. Todd Bell is right up at the line of scrimmage, and he and Singletary were waiting for Brown, so it'll be fourth down. The Bears have called a timeout. They want to give uh, Dennis McKinnon a possible chance to uh, return a punt. He's done it before. He did it last week against the Packers for a touchdown. Three seconds on the clock. Well, one option would be for the uh, Vikings to just hold the ball, don't kick it. Well, they could do that, except the clock automatically stops uh, on a change of possession, so the clock would not continue to roll. Of course, three seconds, they could probably rule that off if they ran a, an end run. Sure. Let's see, and Dills is coming back out there, so they're not going to punt it. Brown comes back on the field. And McKinnon goes back off, and the Bears' defense comes back on because they see that the Vikings are going to... And you know, it's a funny how a few seconds makes a difference. The Bears kind of lingered for about four or five seconds before they did call the timeout. Uh, otherwise, it would have been, uh, you know, seven or eight or nine seconds and uh, would have changed the strategy. So they'll sit on it now. Well, either that or they could make one chuck down the field. Yeah, they could. What the heck? Like you say, what do they got to lose? What do they got to lose? <laughs> Just a division title. Nothing to fear except the fear itself. <laughs> Well, he's got three receivers, and that looks like what he's going to do. Going out of the shotgun, he's going to throw it down, and at least apparently looks like he's going to do that. I like this. Why not? Let her rip. A block. Batted around, and it's batted out of bounds. So that'll bring the half to a close here at the Metrodome, where... It's nice and comfortable indoors today as uh, Minnesota actually outdoors almost bomby for this time of year. 
when we arrived on Friday was five degrees but it's 32 and snowing in here comfortable 68 with the Bears holding a 16 to 6 